I never know how to start a video, so this is how I'm going to start the video. Um, first of all, I apologise for the terrible lighting in here. We are officially in monsoon, which means it's kind of grey outside. And that kind of sucks when you're trying to film a video where you look like a half-decent person. But having said that, welcome back to my channel, you guys. My name is Swish, and today we are doing Budget Art School episode number two. Let's do this. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about composition. Now composition is one of those tricky theory things that artists learn very early on. Um, but because I didn't go to art school, I didn't actually learn it until earlier this year. I didn't even bother to put in the time because I figured, well, I do studies and the composition is usually already decided for me. But this year, this January, I spent most of my time reading about composition, about our theory, about colours and all that good stuff. And I think now I understand better why you need all these fundamentals in place. So. There will be a little bit of jargon, there will be a little bit of like theory and you know interesting stuff. Hopefully it won't be as dry as it sounds, but we'll see how it goes. So I hope you don't mind I've had to put my hair up. And if you hear any snoring in the background, that is my dog. This is his afternoon siesta time. So I hope that isn't too much of an issue. Alright, so I want to show you on Photoshop how I go about thinking about composition and honestly it's nothing it's nothing too difficult so <laughs> so a lot of times people think of composition as like the position of objects in a drawing or in an art piece and while technically that might be true, I want you to think of composition as you taking your viewers out on a field trip. So now if you were to take your viewers out on a field trip, you would first think about the main attractions in your piece. And then you would think about the other little details that you want them to notice about your piece. And finally, you will think about a path that will best connect all of these details so that it makes a cohesive trip. Similarly, with any piece of art, you want to consider just how busy it's going to be. So I know a lot of artists prefer fairly minimal work and a lot of artists prefer fairly detailed work. Personally, I like kind of a mix so I like having one large element usually it's a person um, in my drawings but I also have a couple of pieces where there is no primary focus but just a bunch of secondary and tertiary ones so composition you're leading your viewer through your art piece that's basically what it is so a couple of rules rules i mean rules are meant to be broken right but a couple of things to remember is there are certain things that carry visual weight so i'm not talking about kilograms no i'm talking about what they mean to us as people so there is humans which is like the number one heaviest heaviest visual element in your piece followed by any other living creatures. All right, so the next is living creatures, which again, when we look at a human or an animal in a painting, and if everything else in the background is inanimate, we are automatically drawn to the living creature. And then you have your bright spots. So, if you have a drawing with all three of these, your eye is first going to go to the humans and then the living creatures and then 
any other spots of light. Now, this has to do a little with contrast. So if I were to have a dark background here and then draw on here with, say, a lighter color, what's the first thing you're going to notice is this really bad stick figure. I've gotten to the point in art where I just cannot even draw stick figures and you will get to that point too and then you'll rue the day that you can draw. Okay, so <laughs> the first thing you're going to notice is this figure. It's not even white because on a white background, this is a grey. So it's not even that you're drawn to very extreme contrast, but the stronger the contrast, so if I were to make this completely white, your eye will most likely be drawn here. And that's the point I'm trying to make when it comes to brightness. So a bright element in your drawing will be very visually appealing, very visually attractive. Um, so if you don't have any humans or living creatures in your drawing, if that's just not your style, if you do landscapes, if you do fantasy um, craziness that I am not capable of doing, think bright. This is your focal point. Now, let's talk a little bit about leading lines. What is a leading line? When I told you that we were going to go on a field trip around your art piece, you know how I mentioned the path? That is your leading line. So a lot of art pieces have spirals. A lot of them have these like weird square spirals. A lot of them have direct focal points, leading lines, lines that lead to the leading lines. So a leading line is basically a path that brings you to your main subject inside out. You want to start by drawing your main subject and then place elements around it so that it frames the subject. And I'll have a couple of examples just here. And I want you to notice how it's not just the human aspect or the animal aspect or the bright aspect that leads you to the actual focal point of the image, but also the background elements and all the little lines around that subtly direct you. You see, for the longest time, I thought this was witchcraft, but <laughs> the thing is, it wasn't witchcraft, it was leading lines. So there you go, that's some very, very basic composition concepts and I will go into much more detail about value studies, about choosing your subject and all of that stuff later in the series. But for now, know that it is not witchcraft. And I think the whole point of this video was for me to show you that it can be taught. So art is not necessarily inborn. Yes, some of us have a proclivity to it when we are younger or naturally, but that wasn't the case for me at all. So art can be taught, composition can be taught, and witchcraft can definitely be taught. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of episode two. So I truly hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please take a second to subscribe down below and give this video a thumbs up and possibly even leave me a comment telling me what you think. Um, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I am truly grateful to spend some time with you today and I'll see you next time. Bye.